So we, when we measure hip flexion, we have to respect the fact that there's relative motions that are important. So typically what they're gonna say is that normal hip flexion is 120 degrees in, in 125 some, in some cases. But if we, if we just look at, at the isolated femur in the acetabulum, that would be correct, but that's not how we move. We always have relative motions. And if we pay attention to how we do hip flexion, uh, our hip flexion measure, then we're gonna get a much better representation of do I have sacral counter-nutation, do I have lumbar rotation to the same side that I'm measuring. And so the way that we wanna measure the hip flexion, so I'm gonna grab a hold of a con now, so I'm gonna actually control the position of the femur. It might not be perfect, but if I control the, the, the condyles, I'm going to eliminate a lot of the internal and external rotation that's going to take place. As I pass through the sticking point of, of the hip is where I really want to make sure that I can control that femur. And then I want to make sure that I compress the hip all the way into the abdomen. So I want thigh on abdomen. At this point, what should happen is I should get counter root, or sorry, counter mutation of the sacrum on this side, and I should get lumbar rotation to this side, and that's what allows me to create this compressive strategy without a lot of motion on this side at all. Now, so as I bring your knee up, what I want you to do, actually just do this for me, just arch your back for me. So, yeah, so, so keep it arched. So now as I bring her up, if I want to compress her, i got to roll her pelvis back, and then I would see this hip flexion uh, occur on this side. Then I know that, that what I don't have is counter mutation on this side. I have an anterior ori orientation of the pelvis, and I have somebody that has p potentially an expanded IR element uh, of the hip. And so that either confirms my strategy or allows me to select a better intervention. So the way you measure hip flexion does matter, but I think that we need to, to approach this from, from trying to max out this compressive element of, of thigh on abdomen, abdomen to make sure that we have all relative motions intact. But like I said, it's, a, it's also a very confirming test in regards to do I have anterior orientation or do I have an inhaled axial position or an exhaled axial position. So, so again, I think hip flexion could be a lot more useful than what we've done in the past if we respect what the relative motions are and should be.